bittersweet, but it is time. Welcome to the State of the City for 2014. Now, a couple of years ago, a group of graduates from Van Horn High School asked me to share what happened in Independence since uh, we graduated. It was a class reunion of about four or five different classes that uh, joined together. As a result, turned out <coughs> an interesting trip through the progress that Independence has made. And as I reflect on the 20 years that I have had the privilege of serving as an elected official in Independence, I thought that a similar look back would be an interesting subject for my last State of the Union or State of the City address. <laughs> and it just elevated. <laughs> to, to, to illustrate how we have connected to our community. When I was a youngster, my family lived out in the county by Hill Park. Back then, Independence was much smaller. Most commercial businesses were located on the Independence Square. The city's electric power was provided by a coal-fired power plant located on the southeast corner of Nolan and Truman. After World War II, Independence expanded through a series of annexations. Between 1948 and 1975, Independence grew from a city of 3.3 square miles with a population of 16,000 people to 78 square miles with a population of 112,000 people. In 1958, the Blue Ridge Mall opened at Sterling and Forty Highway. The mall was an open-air shopping facility that had the advantage of being located adjacent to a brand new highway called Interstate I-70. The mall had a larger version of the stores that were already located on the Independence Square, such as the Jones Store, J.C. Penney's, and Woolworths. The stores on the square could not compete, and they closed. As traditional downtowns across America declined, Cities, including Independence, created something known as Land Clearance for Redevelopment Authority to administer federally funded redevelopment projects. The city adopted three of these urban renewal projects. The Jackson Square Urban Renewal Project was approved in 1967 and was supposed to restore the city's vitality by creating an open-air shopping and walking district. The Urban Renewal Authority acquired and demolished many buildings within a two-block radius of the Jackson County Courthouse. The project featured large concrete canopies that blocked the view of the stores located on the square. Main Street and Liberty Street in front of the courthouse were closed to vehicles. People had to walk further and further for fewer and fewer businesses. The project also included construction of a wall around the Jackson County Courthouse that was filled with dirt to create a raised pedestrian area. What happened there? Well, not much. Customers continued to disappear. Businesses continued to close. Well, there was one significant result. The wall around the courthouse acted like a bathtub that trapped water and began flooding the courthouse basement. The building deteriorated to the point that county offices had to be relocated in other facilities. For years, citizens committees worked to solve the flooding problem and remodel the facility. And one day, somebody was looking at some old pictures of the square and the courthouse, and guess what? There were no walls in the photographs. Thanks to the efforts of the Jackson County Legislature, the Jackson County Executive Mike Sanders, local citizens committee, and Independence City Council, the wall has been torn down the courthouse and surrounding lawn has been restored to its original glory and 79 new parking spaces have been created. City and county government offices have moved back into the building. A new museum featuring local artist George Calum Bingham has been created. The county courthouse and Independence Square have been reconnected with the community and Jackson County. And after all, we are the county seat. Shopping in Englewood and Fairmount connected many of us. What happened to those connections? The Independence Center at 39th Street and Highway 291 opened in 1974 as an enclosed climate-controlled shopping destination. The businesses in Englewood and Fairmount could not compete, and the business some of us remember are gone. The Blue Ridge Mall tried to compete, 
by installing a roof and becoming an enclosed climate control shopping center. But it failed to attract repeat customers and now it is gone. The only remaining connection with the Blue Ridge Mall are the flower pots on the square that were originally part of the mall's interior decor. The greatest hindrance to Independence Center in its early years was poor traffic access. Shoppers had to exit I-70 at Nolan Road or Highway 291 and drive east on 39th Street to the center. 39th Street was only two lanes wide back then. Three or four hour backups were common during the holidays. A more convenient access to I-70 had been talked about for 25 years. In 1993, the mayor, the city council, with the help of city staff, began an all-out campaign to get a second access point to I-70. The result is a connection of the Little Blue Parkway to I-70. It provides access to the shopping area from the east and has opened more than 36 square miles of Eastern Independence for new retail, industrial, and housing development. The Little Blue Parkway now connects I-70 to 24 Highway and will eventually connect with I-29 and I-35. This will take traffic off the I-70 and make a shorter route to the north right through Independence. In addition to the roadway construction, the city began a major push for retail growth. In the 10 year span between 1993 and 2003, Independence saw the greatest period of retail development that Independence has ever experienced. The area is connected to our community by more than retail development. Healthcare has become a major connection. Centerpoint Medical Center, offering a full array of more than 22 medical services, opened in 2007. In October of 2012, Children's Mercy Hospital opened. Some people felt the connection to healthcare and Independence was broken when HCA opened Centerpoint and closed Independence Regional and the Medical Center of Independence. In some sense, the connection may have been broken, but the city has continued to support construction of new health care facilities for residents who were affected by the closing. The Fairmount Medical Center has been constructed on the south side of 24 Highway between Ash and Hardy. Oh, by the way, if any of you were patrons of the Calico Cat in Fairmount, it gave its last of its nine lives for this project. Swope Health Services is being constructed on the north side of Truman Road between Forest and Sterling, the site of the old plywood barn. In 2007, the city reaffirmed its support for public transportation with the construction of the centrally located transit center. And the city started providing our own intra-city bus service. The Indy Bus connects passengers to more services and facilities than ever before. When I was a freshman at Van Horn, the only senior high school in Independence School District was William Christman, located at the corner of Union and Maple. Before William Christman High School moved to 24 Highway and Nolan Road in 1958, school's basketball games were played at the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Building. In 1998, our citizens began to push to upgrade our parks program and facilities, including the Memorial Building. Now I'll let you in on a little secret. When the city was trying to raise money to refurbish the memorial building, we contacted Representative Dick Franklin. He agreed to meet with us and over lunch at Stevenson's restaurant. Dick was very helpful in suggesting that the other state legislators would be more inclined to provide state funding for the project if the former president, Harry Truman's name, was included in the building's name. That lunch is a connection to what we call the building today, the Truman Memorial Building. To re-emphasize the connection of the Truman Memorial Building to the men and women who served in the military and to honor and preserve their memories, a Veterans Hall was dedicated in 2006. War memorabilia and voice recordings of veterans' war experiences are maintained at the Hall and at the Library of Congress. The area west of the Truman Memorial Building, bounded by Maple, Truman, and Pleasant, has experienced several transitions over the years. It was the site of the first public high school in Independence, then it became the junior high. People know the location today as the Palmer Senior Center. The Palmer Senior Center received national accreditation as a senior center by the National Council on Aging in 2011. 
Within two weeks after I was first elected mayor, I was presented with the problem of the city losing its genealogy library. I had to become involved with persuading the board of directors of the Mid-Continent Public Library System to build a brand new state-of-the-art center here in Independence. I asked staff to prepare a plan and they did an outstanding job. I presented the plan and we saved our library from going north of the river. The 52,000 square foot facility located at Kiger and Lee Summit Road was completed in 2008 and is connected to genealogy sources worldwide. Thank you staff for saving this for us. There is a special connection between the new library and the old junior high school at Mabel and Pleasant. As a young boy scout, my troop helped collect funds for the placement of Lady Liberty statue in front of the junior high school. Today, thanks to the City's Beautification Commission and the Mid-Continent Public Library Board of Directors, that statue has been refurbished and is now standing on a pedestal in, at the entrance of the library. Our park facilities and recreation program connect residents of all ages. Remember the power and light plant at Nolan and Truman. The power plant was converted to the Roger T. Sermon Community Center in 1980 to house parks department, recreation and cultural programs, including a community theater. Recently, the Sermon Center was upgraded with a grant from building a healthier independence initiative to create new connections with independence residents affected by the closing of the local YMCA. The Three Trails Sun and Fun Club built a swimming pool at 1700 Dickinson Road in 1958. The city bought the pool in 1977, and for years it was the only city-owned pool in the community. The city's Adventure Oasis Water Park replaced that old pool in 2005 and has been providing family fun at affordable rates ever since. The Parks and Recreation Department struggled for years to schedule enough fields for our Little League baseball and football teams to have playing time and practice time on our limited facilities. We won't even mention the lack of soccer fields. After our citizens passed the parks tax, we were able to plan and construct a 160-acre Independence Athletic Complex on Salisbury Road just east of 291, allowing for soccer, football, baseball, and softball to be played on the same facility. The complex includes restrooms and more than 1.5 miles of walking trail. The complex was dedicated in 2008. As many of you know, tourism is one of my passions and one of Independence's greatest economic tools. There's nothing I enjoy more than talking to visitors about our wonderful historic sites. The Truman Home, the Truman Library, to the Chicago Alton Depot. Information about our historic sites can be viewed on the city's award-winning websites that connects the city to the entire world. Or you can tune in to the city's governmental access channel to watch city council and planning commission meetings. Oh, and don't forget to look at our monthly edition of City Scene Newsletter. 52,000 copies of this newsletter are distributed to utility customers, libraries, and schools to make sure our citizens stay connected. We were all connected by the frustration that the falls of Crackerneck has not developed as quickly as planned. However, we should not ignore the positive connections with the falls. A new pizza ranch restaurant is scheduled to open this summer, giving us a second standalone restaurant in the development. A new 165 room Stony Creek Hotel and Conference Center is scheduled to open the last quarter of this year. The area just to the east of the falls is developing also. A new state-of-the-art car wash just opened, and I have some indication that another facility has been considered just to the north of the car wash. Bass Pro continues to be a destination in this part of the metropolitan area for shoppers from the Midwest. Our residents are enjoying the 80-acre waterfall park and its 18-acre lake. People are constantly using the walking trail, which provides access to the Little Blue Trace Trail. 
This past summer, approximately 1,000 people attended the fifth annual Echo Fest at the park. More than 1,000 people have already signed up for the second annual Park Trot 5K Walk and Run that will be held this coming May. These positive connections make long-lasting memories. I believe that we can help provide the energy and resources to support the future of other portions of our community. For most of us, besides family, there are probably no greater connections than those with our schools and neighborhoods. Englewood is no longer an independent retail area, but through connections with the area residents, business owners, and city, it has been reborn as the Englewood Station Arts District. The city provided assistance to our local organizations that are working to sustain neighborhood connections. We joined the 12 Block West initiative to assist in the demolition of an abandoned, dangerous apartment building and two substandard fourplexes in Northwestern Independence. In their place, two single-family homes have been built, in addition to six two-bedroom units and one three-bedroom unit that is totally handicap accessible. The city connected with the Northwest CDC, Truman Heritage Habitat for Humanity, BP Amico, Department of Housing and Urban Development, and the Grain Valley Bank to reestablish confidence in the area around the old Amico refinery. The Norledge Place Project rehabilitated two homes to illustrate the possibilities. When complete, six additional homes will have been rehabilitated and seven new homes will have been constructed. All but one or two of these homes have been sold. The project received national recognition and a visit from the Director of Housing and Urban Development. Sometimes success doesn't come easy, but it doesn't mean we should give up. The Blue Ridge Cinema was the first multi-screen theater in Independence. After the theater closed, the location became an eyesore. The independent staff and local economic development group worked diligently to secure a new tenant for the property. After a seven-year effort, the staff was able to match the tenant and a developer. And I'm happy to report that we had a ribbon cutting for the new Burlington Coat Factory in the fall of 2013. Independence was the first city in the country with a population of over 100,000 to make a 100% switch to LED street lights. Independence Power and Light has estimated that the complete change out could save more than $350,000 a year, in addition to the savings of $150,000 per year in maintenance costs. Not only are there long term financial benefits, but according to the manufacturer, the LED program will remove more than 31,000 metric tons of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. When I became mayor, Independence was divided among five different school districts. Independence, Kansas City, Raytown, Blue Springs, and Fort Osage, each with their own elected school boards, financial issues, and administrative concerns. The city council must maintain a positive connection with these multiple school districts for the benefit of our residents. The western areas that Independence annexed in the 50s were within the Kansas City School District. My wife and I both attended schools of the Kansas City School District. We both graduated from Van Horn. I watched with sadness as troubles in the Kansas City School District caused our schools and Western Independence to decline the, during the last 30 years. Therefore, I was pleased to support the successful efforts of patrons of the Independence School District to annex portions of the Kansas City District within the Independence City limits. The schools such as my alma mater have received multi-million dollar renovations. Since the annexation in November of 2007, families with children are moving into and reconnecting with Western Independence. Academic success has increased. For example, graduation rate at Van Horn has increased by more than 20 percent. Eighty percent of the graduates were accepted into college. Annexation of Kansas City School District has connected to other neighborhood benefits, such as the renovation of Mount Washington School at 570 South Evanston. 
The school, which is on the Registry of Historic Places, is being converted into senior apartment complex. The $10.5 million conversion will result in 45 apartments to ensure that the building will remain and retain its connection to the neighborhood. Before I close, I want to focus on another feature in the community that is connecting all age groups, the Independence Event Center. Since its opening in 2009, 850,000 skaters have enjoyed the center point community ice. The Missouri Mavericks, the first professional sports team to call Event Center home, have connected with their fans in a big way. The Mavericks have been named the CHL Franchise of the Year in 2011, 2012, and 2013, and are currently in first place. The Missouri Comets soccer team has become the second professional team to call the Independence Event Center home. There are already 51 events booked at the center for 2014. Since some of the events extend several days, if you are interested in making your own connection, I encourage you to call the booking staff. Many of us have fond memories of the old Stevenson's restaurant at 40 Highway and Lee Summer Road. One of my first jobs was at Stevenson's, where I worked as a busboy, and then a waiter, and finally a host. I worked there in high school and college, and Joe and I had our first date there over 50 years ago. The restaurant is now gone, replaced with the latest generation of convenience stores that is creating its own connections. Well, that is a thumbnail sketch of what's happened in Independence. Independence is steeped in history. We have a future filled with possibilities. We're revitalizing our mature areas, and we have 36 square miles of available new growth. We are the center of transportation for the metropolitan area. We have more railhead in the Kansas City area. In fact, we're number two in the nation. Chicago's number one. As we experience firsthand, growth happens when transportation is available. Hopefully, we will see a new railway connection in the near future. We can make our own destiny. The state of our city is a bright beacon to the metropolitan area and to the world. It's time for Joe and I. We'll skip that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to be your mayor for the last eight years. Thank you.